got some good key action going on, doesn't it? Amazing when you put a new propeller in. I've never seen it squirt that much water out that much. Oh, he pet me. It's grabbing you. It's like a cat. Have you got the food in your food down? It's not stuck right here. Dinner? Okay. No, fritter. Fritter? That's what we're going to turn them into. Fritter. Yes. Hey, can I get my two shoes? Taste the crab. Sure. Like To this conk, gonna clean them, I'll break them open so I can release them from their shells. From their shells. Okay. There you go. Yay! He's a big boy. He's in there. Here's your shell, Carter. No, I don't want it. I just Ugh. want to die. What's that? Yeah, that's his sexual reproductive part. What? It's the part that gives you it as a male. Hmm. You want to eat it, Mom? No. Negative. He certainly smells it. That's the part that should be feeding to the to the uh, 
Stingrays. Stingrays. My dad found some conch and he cut and cleaned it. And then my mom kind of cut and cleaned it. Yeah, and then my mom cleaned it off and skinned it. And then I smashed it into little flakes so that we can turn them into fritters, which are basically chicken strips or conch strips. Why do we have to pound it with a hammer? Because they're very tough. Ah. There's a salad. salad. For the night and our bread for the night. What kind of bread we get today? Uh, coconut bread and cinnamon bread. From where? Um, a nice variety of bimini breads. Bimini breads. Somebody else knows it's time for dinner. Tiger. So. What do you think, Caleb? How do we do? Good. <laughs> Kid loves his comp. Kids are allergic to just about everything in the ocean. Hmm. Conch, lobster, and scallops, so he can eat. Mm -hmm. He doesn't miss the opportunity, do you? Mm -hmm. Is that my hammer? Yes. Then let me do it. Okay. Where'd you find this? Yeah. Oh, bro, so. Okay, so do that sharp side and keep whacking that until we can use it as a... What are you going to do face. with it now? This? See the face? Yeah, the little face. Uh, we're going to crack it open that this crack for actually. Hello. Carter. Carter. Can I crack it open? No. <laughs> I'm going to crack it open. Careful. That's going to slide first on pinatas. I always get the, I always get the final okay, blow. Okay, I want to see the blow. inside. It's Use that either get the final blow and... or second final blow. Can you pull it open? I don't think we want the hammer on the inside stuff. We can pull this open, Caleb. Harder, harder. Do the other side of the, like the hard side. The, the other side of the hammer. Oh! Whoa. Hey, don't watch. use the fingers on the hammer. Use the flat part. Yeah, right oh. here. You should be able to pull that. <gasps> oh! Oh! You got half. Rescue! Did it sink? Oh, it sinks. All the fish are eating it. <laughs> I'm not lying, the fish are swarming. Oh, Let's see it. Coconut open. Good job. <laughs> Let me see it. The fish are swarming the coconut. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Talking from Our Aft. Today we are talking about We're gonna talk about tools and spare parts. So we've had a couple of questions about uh, what we take for tools. Uh, what is we what have we found to be the most helpful what's really saved us mm -hmm. and um, for starters you, you need a basic set of mechanic tools so you need to have your your wrenches you need to have your sockets <clears throat> you need to have your various sizes so honestly the best thing is just to go out and buy one of those hundred and what they about 150 180 piece tool set yeah. um, get well, a good, some depot all the yeah time. good a good quality one um, don't go necessarily harbor freight on those because um, you want a good case and you're, you're going to be using them quite a bit actually. Same thing with the wrenches. I like the gear wrenches because there are spots where you want to have that uh, ratcheting feature mm -hmm. to be able to get in and out. And then you, you're going to need your screwdrivers, uh, various sizes, and again get some shorties, get some really tiny ones, 
lot of your electrical connections are the almost like uh, eyeglass repair type size. So there's the super small ones, so get a little set of those. Um, oddly enough, one of the most important tools I use a lot is a like a pry bar. And if you get these, they usually make like a three set, a, th a three set version, and they look like a screwdriver. And you know they got it short, medium, and long. And then at the end, it looks like a screwdriver with a, a curved tip, and it's got a handle, like a bigger handle, like a screwdriver. You use those all the time for prying things off, uh, for disconnecting things. When you're tightening your alternator belt, you use those. And having the different sizes uh, makes a big deal. Um, Electrically, I always carry a set of uh, electrical connections, uh, the heat shrink ones. So you've got your blade connectors, your ring terminals. Um, I, go to Western Marine or go online and get the set that has a little bit of everything. There's three colors. There's yellow, blue, and pink, and they each correspond to different wire size. And those tend to be, those three colors tend to be most of the sizes of most wires on a boat that you need to adjust. Um, along with those, you got to have your crimper. So you got your basic electrical tools. You got to have your crimper. You got to have your diagonal wire cutters. You got to have your wire strippers. Um, you also need to have either a heat gun or a torch of some sort to be able to melt those connections. Hair dryer. Um, hair is not quite hot enough, I don't gotcha. think. But um, something to melt those and, and keep those, uh, make them watertight. I'm trying to think of what else. Hose clamps, hoses. Oh, yeah. So hose clamps. Hose, oh, hose clamps go through your boat and figure out all the different sizes of hoses and make sure you have multiple uh, hose clamps for each size. Every time I do a job that involves hose, not only do I buy the hose I need, but I buy double the amount of hose. And I buy, um, every time I go in, I buy hose clamps. I buy an extra two or three. He buys hose clamps like little kids buy candy. I've got a whole case. But thus far, I've yet to not have a hose clamp that I, that I needed, which is great. Yeah. Same thing with the hoses. If you do the project once and then usually that hose is good for another couple years, but to have that in reserve, it's amazing. Yeah, you've got that piece of hose here, but you also have it here, 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 and here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you're gonna find about a half a dozen to a dozen different sizes of hose and type of hose on your boat. From the exhaust hose to the water coolant hoses to the uh, uh, freshwater hoses to the, uh, I mean, they're, they're different types. So you gotta have all different kinds and all different sizes. And um, we've lived on the boat now for almost four years, and it seems like our projects are coming full circle. So some of the things we worked on four yeah. years ago, we're now coming back to it. Uh, I've heard it said that there's over like 30,000 parts mm -hmm. on a boat. Every day one will break. And it's true. Every day something breaks. It's just a matter of what do you want to deal with and fix. And it's not all catastrophic. But um, we also keep for emergency purposes, we keep what are those like whole binky things that you like? Oh, bungs. Bungs, yeah, they're like a wooden plug, and you can buy them, I guess, at West Marine or any hardware store. You can buy a hand. set of them, and uh, you put them in a place where they're easy to get to. And a lot of people will actually zip tie the appropriate size uh, Ooh, to amazing. each through hole. So if a hose ruptures and the ball valve doesn't work for some reason, mm -hmm. you take that and you shove it in there and you whack with a hammer yeah. and you set it. And you then, can also jump in the water and you can set those from the outside if you need oh, to. Good to know. Uh, we also uh, got like a flex seal tape. They're on infomercials <laughs> where like they work underwater. We've never needed it, but we actually had someone here in Bimini tell us that they needed it and we lent it to them. Yeah. They had a leak in their boat, some fiberglass cracks. So keep those kind of things on hand. Always duct tape. Yeah. Um, zip ties. You use zip ties all the time. All kinds everything. of zip ties. And then. Um... It's amazing how many of our spare parts and stuff we've actually, tools we've loaned to people or people have purchased pieces of hose or spare pumps and stuff like that for me, so. If you're traveling uh, offshore, keep an extra bilge pump for sure. Fresh water pump is nice. Uh, I mean, you can survive without it, mm -hmm. but bilge pump, you really should have an extra of. And then we also always take extra, um, like all the belts yep. and all of that. So as Julian's getting into that stuff, the, the ones that I carry that are a must have all the time for like your main engine, you gotta have spare water impellers. Mm -hmm. and, and so what those are is they suck the cool, the ocean water in to cool the engine. And those are notorious for going out, should be serviced once a year, replaced, and so I always carry spares. The other one is, is belts. Your belts, especially in our setup, serpentine belts don't stretch as much as the old V belts that we have. Um, so I'll go through in the course of cruising a couple months, I might change my belts uh, once or even twice. I haven't changed them yet. Um, and I've cruised what, for a month now, mm -hmm. but um, 
as they stretch, they're going to get to the point where you can't tighten them anymore, and so you just have to replace them. Mm -hmm. So I usually carry two or three sets of those for each engine. Um, I also have a spare circulation pump on board. So what that is, is um, for the coolant on the engine, you've got your raw water, but you also have your coolant, and that circulates through, and there's a water pump on the front of the engine called a circulation pump, which is just like the water pump you have on your car. And when we bought the boat, one of ours was leaking. I was able to source two, I replaced the bad one, and then kept the other one in its box as a spare because I could replace either one on either engine if needed. And then we've, in the past, dealt with redundancy already, but uh, two years ago, our generator went out and batteries all died. So we ended up adding solar, which to this day is still the first thing I would do to any boat, I would add solar. And um, we're still running our generator a lot right now because it's summer, it's hot and it's buggy, and then it's rainy. So we can't leave all the hatches open at night because there's yeah. no wind and it's gonna rain. Um, and the bugs are getting in. But if we had to have the generator off for some reason, no big deal, our solar would mm -hmm. charge the battery. Even if it's stormy for a day, wait a day or two and it's gonna charge eventually. So there's that redundancy, I always have stuff on hand. Some people will carry an extra spare little, like a Honda 2000 generator. Mm -hmm. We don't because we don't. We feel the solar kind of is our generator yeah. backup. Um, but that but is a great option. If you don't option. have solar, grab that. Uh, same as I was talking about those parts for the main engines, the generators have those same parts. Mm -hmm. So you want to have spare impeller, you want to have spare belts, um, that kind of thing. Another thing that people will carry spares of, and I have, uh, and I've used them and sold them in the past, is alternators for um, the engines and for the generator. Mm -hmm. I currently have a spare on board for the generator. Um, I don't have a spare on board right now for the engines, um, but because we have multiple ways of charging, I didn't feel it was necessary this time. Mm -hmm. uh, last time I had just put a new alternator on one and then I, the other one was a spare, mm -hmm. and I ended up selling it to someone else who needed it in a pinch. Mm -hmm. So um, again, it's amazing how much stuff you can sell and barter for if you have it on board, because a lot of people don't come prepared. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a one transmission that continually likes to uh, have a seal issue on the back of it and so I've started because you you got to kind of learn your boat but I know that that's an issue and I've replaced it twice and so I always carry spare seals on board they're like an eight dollar seal no big deal the trick is is that particular transmission the nut to get the coupling off to, to be able to replace that seal is a particular size it's like an inch and three-eighths or something so if you've got some specialty something on your boat that you need to make sure you have that tool for that particular nut or that particular bolt or whatever make sure you have that on board another common one is like our shaft seals or three quarter inch wrenches and it's nice to have two of those on board instead of just one uh, because there's two nuts on there and uh, you may lose one and that kind of thing so figure out what's the most important size and maybe have a couple of those and so i keep one of my three quarters in my tool bag but then i keep the other three quarter up on the helm so that if i need to get to it in a moment's notice to adjust because um, there's two or three actually the water makers are three quarter inch there's a couple of things on our boat that are three quarter inches and to have that out that's a very common one i use all the time and if all else fails use a radio hail all the other cruisers the locals have everything. We've run into situations where we've seen other people where we don't have anything to help them, but we found another cruiser that had a part that they needed or a tool that they needed. And so there's still community out here. You're not completely isolated and alone. Don't stress out, just solve one problem at a time. And if you solve enough problems, you'll fix, exactly. you'll fix it. That's our favorite problem. line from the Martian. Um, Jolene was talking about some other pumps earlier and the uh, there's a couple I would like to carry. Bilge pumps for sure along with extra float switches, because sometimes the pumps find the float switch goes out. I've outfitted our boats, all the float switches and all the pumps are the same. So if I can carry, and we have two bilge pumps. So if I can carry one spare, I'm covered in both departments. Um, so you gotta think about this stuff before you leave. Don't just buy a bilge pump and take off. You need to look at what you currently have and make sure that what you have is a swap in replacement. Because what if it has a different outlet size hose instead of an inch, it's an inch and a quarter, that kind of thing. So you need to get that figured out. Um, Jolene mentioned a house water pump. We've replaced that before and we always carry a spare. We've replaced that twice now actually, mm -hmm. in four years. And to not be able to have fresh water is a big deal. So definitely, definitely worth carrying one of those. And then uh, we have air conditioning and so air conditioner pumps are a big deal. And those are hard to find even in the States. You gotta order those normally, let alone in the down in the islands. Um, and we have set up, so our water maker and our air conditioner the, the use the same pump. Not the same uh, exact pump, but the same model pump. We have two of them. 
and so I carry a third and another one for a spare. And so I've actually, because of that, I've got two backups. If I, if I needed to flip that one back and forth between water maker and AC, we could. Uh, and then I also have a spare in addition to that. Um, those are some really important pumps, in my opinion, to carry mm -hmm. for creature comforts and making sure you can function. Um, there's a lot of people carry spare propellers. We don't have any. Uh, if you have them, great. I wouldn't take them off the boat, but I'd keep them. Um, I don't know that I necessarily would recommend that you have to go spend you know thousands of dollars to have spare ones on board. But I do see that in some people that will even carry spare shafts. Yeah. Um, I think that comes down to like, you need to be a better captain, right? <laughs> Stuff happens, but if you're doing something where you've, I mean, again, accidents happen. You could be in the middle of nowhere and at night and a dang killer whale comes and takes your, rips your <laughs> rudder off. Right. We've seen stuff like that. Uh, not here, but we've heard about it over in, the, in, in Europe. But sometimes stuff's overkill, right? And, and I, in my opinion, I think those are probably... Now, if you have a sailboat with a small prop and it's easy to put a spare in, that's fine. Oh, we need to talk about spares for your um, Dean. So we, we carry uh, patch material, right? Oh, so we can patch it because you never know when something's going to happen always, there. Always take a dinghy with oars, too. I know that seems yep. stupid and redundant, but there have been known thefts where people will either take your engine off your dinghy or your engine just stops working. So we always have a radio on board, obviously. Throw out your anchor if for some reason you can't move, but then have oars. I know it seems stupid. And, and then a few videos ago, I did the service on our outboard. You should carry all that stuff. It's not that big a deal. It was like 50 bucks and you got your spark plugs and you've got your water impeller and the fluid to change the lower end unit. And the biggest thing on outboard, I would say, is to I would recommend carrying a spare propeller for that. Because when a hub spins on those, that's a rubber piece in the propeller. The way you replace that is you put a new propeller on. And uh, our boat came with a spare. We've mm -hmm. never used it, but it's there if we need it. Um, so if you're going to repitch your your uh, propeller because of to, to get it to run on plane or whatever it is right, still keep that old one even if it's not quite the right pitch because in a pinch it'll get you by. Um, but yeah, that's pretty that's pretty much it for this the, the uh, outboard yeah. carry those. What? I was gonna say. Hope this was helpful. Yep. If you have any more questions or comments, please leave them below. We'll yeah. look at them and if you've got a, get to them and answer. If you've got a recommendation, something as a cruiser that you carry that you think I missed, please Add feel free it. to chime in and throw it in there and let us know. Yep. But thanks again for watching everybody. We really hope this was helpful. And as always, enjoy the journey.